Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're going right back to the lovely subreddit known as Tales of Neckbeard. But beforehand, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, let's get right into that lovely content. Let's go! Our first story comes to us from username LesBestStudMuffin. Stop dreaming about my boyfriend and I. Hello everyone, LesBestStudMuffin here to present you a story. Now my girlfriend and I have been discussing whether or not to post this, we decided to do so. Now to set the record straight, my girlfriend and I are tomboys. Apologies for any mistakes in the story. We've been dating over two years now and still happily together. This story sets back to when we were 16, 15 years old, and our wonderful neckbeard was 17. Let's dive in. My girlfriend and I are two gamers that loved Minecraft. Heaven forbid we don't dive into any other games. Kevin, our neckbeard, knew just about any game you can think of and shot. He plays 24-7 while he isn't in school. He never showers long, greasy hair, a lovely trench coat, and any hat, surprisingly. Kevin is a friend of a friend. We aren't really close to him, and he hangs out when our friend Amy is around. Amy is my girlfriend's best friend at the time. We hung out at the mall one day and it was very nice. Kevin kept commenting on how he was the only single one in the group and we all told him you'll find someone someday. Amy left with her boyfriend and is now with me and my girlfriend. Aren't you ladies just so cute? How long have you been dating? We've been dating for a year now. Ever thought about adding a guy? This was really awkward especially for my girlfriend. We are both lesbian and never want to be open with our relationship. No, Livy and I are happy with just the two plus we are lesbian. We don't see us dating guys at any point. I'd like to point out that there is a a typical not all guys are bad come into play, the most annoying and arrogant thing to say to anyone. Not all guys are bad. I would treat your girls right. I would love you and spoil you, m'ladies. I cringed so hard and tried to keep my temper. My girlfriend wrapped me tight, shaking like a leaf. I decided we needed to go and get away from this creep. Me, no thank you. Kevin, we aren't interested. So please, have some respect for our decision. He was red in the face and we left. Amy texted us and asked us what happened. I explained the situation. Amy explained that Kevin said that we were being disrespectful by calling him names and such. I was livid that he would say such a thing but shouldn't come to a surprise at all. After all, he is a neckbeard. Now where does the drama come in? We're getting that. A week later, my girlfriend and I were chilling at her house, neckbeard decides to message us. My offer still stands. After that altercation, you ladies need a daddy in your life. I would be the best fit to play that role. You will bow down to me. This gets gross so I apologize. You both will be pregnant and my children and learn to respect men. How dare you message us that sickening message. I will not bow down to you or anyone else. I don't need a man in my life or you for the fact. I am happy with my girlfriend and I will make sure to report this to the police and the school. I don't want you messaging us again. So we blocked him off from everything. He did get reported to the school and wasn't allowed to be near us. It could have been worse as we were still going to be his friend. I'm glad we didn't. We never heard from him again and we never saw him in school. To say the least, I hope he grows from this. One can only hope. I'm honestly really glad that you guys did report this because honestly I feel like this could have turned into something so much worse and I'm glad that he got in trouble at school because yeah that's kind of going to make every day awkward from him from now on. Really hoping he does learn from this experience and learns to be a genuine person but you know it could only go. Our next story comes to us from username entitled Goober. Nine and a half hours. Okay so this will be a short one. I knew a guy who was honestly the textbook neckbeard. He was very overweight. I can't say much as I am chubby but I'm losing weight and he also loved adult entertainment entertainment and henty. He bragged about having a hard drive filled with mostly henty. He claimed to be bisexual but never dated a man or mentioned a crush in one. Keep in mind my current partner who was his best friend, my best friend and myself were also all bisexual and he openly spoke about wanting to blow Jared Padalecki. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Anyways, context. I had a boyfriend at this time but we never spoke to each other as we were using each other to suppress feelings for other people. Ironically, I'm two years strong with this guy I was trying not to like as he was with someone else. But that's a nice girl story for another day. I always texted him good morning and night, and we had a thing where we said love you BW, as in love you in a bestie way. So to save time from boring you, I'll rewrite what I remember from the conversation as this was a while ago. You're very tired host, 2.30 AM when writing this, and at the time, 15. Our lovely neckbeard nice guy at the time, 16. Morning bestie, how was your sleep? Eh, yours? Stayed up until 3.30 as usual, LMAO. I'd say you need your beauty sleep, but you're already beautiful. Haha, <laughs> be right back, I got a lot of cleaning to do LMAO. I really did. Okie dokie. Nine and a half hours later, sends a picture of my dirty oven, then one of it clean, and as I spent three hours on it, I am a god of cleaning. 
Yeah? What's up? Nothing. Bro, don't make me send puppy out Padalecki. When you say be right back, it means one to two hours, not nine and a half. Yes, he did write it like that. I'd had enough of him. And when someone says love you bestie way, they mean as a friend, not continue to compliment me even though I'm taken. I'm sorry? I got to go. Bye. Love ya. Okay, bye. I was too mad to care if I sounded like a barch. This is my only story on him. I have enough that I could ramble for weeks. If I get asked enough, I'll post some other stuff. Thanks for reading and have a perfectly awesome day. You know, I honestly am interested to see what the other stories with that person is like, and I'm kind of wondering what he's doing right now, like, with his life, because, you know, it just can't be that productive. And to be honest, this guy kind of seems like the person that'll text you at 3 a.m. and then get mad that you don't reply back for another six hours, you know, because kind of basically the way that this happened. Like, I'm sorry that I don't conform to your crazy schedule, nor your patience. Our next username comes to us from somebody whose nickname or username on Reddit will probably threaten my monetization policy, but, uh, you know, it'll be in the bottom left. A long, creepy neckbeard story. I've never really posted on Reddit before, but have watched my fair share of videos covering this subreddit because I found them relatable. I finally decided to share my own story. Honestly, I'm not even sure this applies here, so apologies if not. I live in a rather small town, the type where everyone knows everyone's name. I remember recognizing this man from martial arts classes I used to take. If I had to guess, I was about 8 at the time, making him 16, and was painfully aware of how much he liked to stare in my general direction. After a few sessions, I made up a vague reason to reschedule my class so I wouldn't have to deal with it any longer. I had only seen him occasionally after that, most commonly at fast food establishments where he was a prolific guest, but crossed paths with him at a local festival once I turned 14. He was hovering around one of my friends I planned on hanging out with that night and didn't leave us the entire time. He had an odd demeanor that drew pity from the kinder hearts in town. Even though he made us uncomfortable that night, neither of us had the gall to tell him to leave us alone. It also didn't help that we were both small in size and stature and he was easily over half a foot taller than both of us, so our one-on-one -on -one hangout was interrupted by his 22-year-old man who took every chance to touch us platonically and insist our sisterhood to him despite me never talking to him previously. To combat it, she and I cut our night short and silently avoided him the nights after, spending them mostly on high alert and migrating out of the area silently. I realize these are things we probably should have said something about, but the fellow citizens of the town had a preconceived idea of the man. He went to church often and seemed like a good, kind Christian man, often flaunting his theism. I realize neckbeards are often categorized by their atheism, which is the main reason I felt this may not apply to the subreddit. He took part in almost every gathering the town had to offer, and everyone knew him by name. Even that night at the festival, he flaunted his theism while constantly finding excuses to hug us, cup our shoulders, and sit closer while we tried to eat despite how much he smelt. Once again, I didn't see him much after that. I'd rarely witness him speaking with another one of my friends who he worked with. She was 15 at the time and would later tell me that, like the night at the festival, he would find excuses to touch her at work. She was a busser and he was a dishwasher, while insisting she was like a sister to him. She would go on and say he would act incredulous and when his supervisors would insist that he was doing was inappropriate and get irrationally angry at work. That next year, when I turned 16, was when the real fun began. I got a job at a new casual restaurant as a waitress, similar to my friend. As I stated before, this man was known for only eating out at places in town. And when this restaurant opened, it didn't take him long to begin coming daily. Of course, I was friendly. Being friendly has always been something that came naturally to both me and my friends. If not, we may have been able to gather the balls to tell this guy to leave us alone. So he took that as an excuse to come at a constant. I was also a bit of a pushover. It didn't take the other waitresses long to realize, one, this guy had a particular affinity for me, and two, he would tip very poorly. He would spend nearly four hours in the establishment eating expensive items on the menu and having me refill his Mountain Dew, I know. He would only tip the nickels and pennies in his pockets, if not nothing at all, all the while insisting I come and sit with him while imploring how nice I am to him. Mind you, this man has a very heavy set, took up a full booth, and normally had friends with him that took up the other and would occasionally pat his thigh while asking me to sit. Since I was getting older and more conscious, I would express slight disgust which he was argued against by per usual insisting I was just a sister to him. He complained about his job quite often and to my mortification quit it and applied to be a dishwasher at the establishment I was working at. This was when I was coming into my own sexuality and I remember speaking to another waitress who was around my age about it. There was no customers inside because there was a bad thunderstorm at the time and she was talking to me about hers and allowed me 
me to open up about mine after. As I began, he entered the room since there were no more dishes to clean. I asked if he wanted to order anything, and he said no, so I resumed quietly so he wouldn't have to hear. I stopped caring about him listening when he stood, walked across the dining area, and sat directly in the booth behind me. Because of this, I continued to explain how little I cared about relationships in general, but mostly swung more towards liking girls. I decided to use this as a strategy, and sadly do to this day. While I'm not a lesbian, it is easier for some to understand me liking girls rather than me not liking anyone at all. Anytime I would bring up being a lesbian, he would cup his heart and insist on how kind I am to him as though, because I am a kind, I must like him in that way. When he would feel particularly unique, he'd go on tangents about reformation, the usual all you have to do is meet the right guy stuff. Now that he worked here, workers, not just the waitresses, became aware of his issues regarding me. They never said this, but I imagine he talked of me in the back of the restaurant where the cooks and others could hear. While I'm break, one of the lesbian women who worked in the kitchen passionately but vaguely told me that it is okay to stand my ground and not be nice sometimes. I didn't really know what she meant until she dropped his name and told me that I didn't have to deal with him if I didn't want to and how she could pull the strings. Suffice to say, I told her it was unnecessary and went on with work. I think she went on with her plan anyway because the man was suddenly rescheduled so he got off when I came on, even though I didn't ask for it. I was grateful. Still, that didn't stop him, and instead of being in the back, he'd eat after work, me being his waitress, obviously. Other workers would pull me over if I looked uncomfortable to have me take their order, but some didn't see an issue with his presence. Despite the man's advances, he never blatantly said he had feelings for me, which I was grateful for. There were occasions where he would find my social media and insist I come to eat out with him or watch a movie, which borderline became spam, but I've always been deaf to men liking me. I think the straw that broke the camel's back was when one of my fellow waitresses, a 35-year-old woman who was normally the one to make me take of the man's order, told me how heartbroken the man was now that he didn't get to see me as much. I opened up about what the others had been doing and she pshed it off and insisted this. Now, 24-year-old man had an innocent crush on a 16-year-old. Because of a lack of customers, therefore tips and income, I soon had to leave and failed to say goodbye to the fellow. A few months passed, my cousin came down to visit for the first time for the holidays and went down that afternoon alone to the McDonald's around the corner from my house. Once the festivities were over, we hung out on my porch casually talking about life and experiences we never got to share together. Something was eating at her visibility, so I asked about it. She went on to tell me that when she went to McDonald's a few hours earlier, she saw this obese man sitting in the corner of the dining area of the place broodingly. She asked him what was wrong while she was waiting for order to be made, and he opened up to her, explaining how he was recently brutally broken up by with by a girl who he was kind to and was kind to him in turn. He then proceeded to drop my name. My name is very unique, so there was no doubt about who he was speaking of. I was mortified by her story to say the least. Insisting I wanted to believe her, I asked her to explain his appearance and say his name if he gave it. I, she couldn't provide the name, but explained his appearance to the T. I.e. unwashed, poor hygiene, concerningly a heavy set, tall, and unkempt facial hair. She also told me that he had this portable gaming system with him at the time, which was another hint because he was known to like video games and gushed over purchasing the system while working with me. I know it's sort of an abrupt ending to the story, but it was fairly recent, so it's hard for me to come to a conclusion regarding something so fresh on my mind. I would go on speaking about how often he called me pretty, how chivalrous he tried to be, but I feel like it would be all sorts of useless. And I usually feel awful with myself knowing that I'm keeping this thing to myself rather than taking it to someone in law enforcement because of its clear pedophilic implications. Maybe it's because I've heard so many others with the exact same stories that I I assume someone has already done it. Maybe it's because I've talked to a friend whose father is in law enforcement and tells me he's harmless and the cops aren't concerned about it? Honestly, I feel like I'm part of the problem. Either way, it was nice to let this all out and appreciate you all for giving me this platform to let it out on. Thank you. Okay, so in the very off chance that you do happen to be watching this video and you see your story here, first off, just plain and simple, you are not the problem. There's no other way to put it. You are not the problem. You're just a very nice and generous person. And this person is using their niceness or your niceness to try and get advantage of that. Because apparently in his eyes, if you are somewhat of a genuine person to him, that must mean that you're in a relationship, which you obviously are not. And I do not believe you ever have any implications to be in a relationship with him. Don't let yourself get down just because some other creeps being a weirdo. And honestly, I would get the manager of the place that you were working at, where both of you were working at on it, because that 
that is definitely some harassment laws. I'm hoping things get better. But with that, that is going to have to be it for the video. If you would like what you had seen, be sure to like the video, comment down below what you liked about the video, and consider subscribing to the channel, becoming part of that amazing notification squad, and checking out that Discord down below. Thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.